Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know something in case you didn't already know it. Whenever government does something, they do it worse than the private sector. It's always because they have all these crazy rules and they can't violate the rules. Well, there's an organization called the TSA, Transportation Safety Authority, which is totally screwing up the air travel of millions of Americans. The joke was TSA stands for thousands standing around. Well, maybe it does because at this point, the wait time is as much as three hours. Somebody was taking a half an hour flight and they had to have three hours to go through the checkpoint. And uh, it just, the reason they say, well, they don't know how to rebalance their personnel because they, they can't shift like the private sector from one airport to another and they can't take advantage of things. Listen, if they get hold of health care, it's ruined. If they get hold of transportation, it's ruined. If they get their hands on the banking system, they're doing everything they can to ruin it. And you turn anything that this government, I mean, this country does to the bureaucrats, and invariably they're going to foul them up. Look what happened to the Veterans Administration. It is a scandal, Wendy. Yeah, Pat, the lines are so bad in some airports that they're sending in the clowns to keep people entertained while they wait. Heather Sells has the story. American Airlines estimates that 4,000 people have missed their flights at O'Hare Airport in Chicago since February, thanks to long wait times. Earlier this week, over 400 people missed getting aboard their plane after waiting hours in the TSA line. Many had to spend the night on airport cots. There's got to be a better way. Both Chicago's major airports, Midway and O'Hare, are telling passengers arrive three hours early before your flight to make sure that you make it. And the TSA chief is apologizing for what happened in Chicago. I don't know what that was. Uh, we're fixing that. That's a great concern to me. We are the busiest aviation uh, city in the country, and there are inadequate resources. And that what is uh, what is maddening and frustrating is it was all predictable and could have been dealt with uh, months ago. So what is happening? Across the country, passenger volume is up by as much as 15% this year compared to last, and the number of screeners is down. TSA is rushing 50 new security officers to Chicago in the next few weeks and hoping to hire more than 6,000 new workers just in time for the summer season. At least one Illinois lawmaker is calling on the TSA chief to resign if lines aren't shorter by Memorial Day. Airports in New York and Atlanta are threatening to privatize screening, although they would need TSA approval. Other airports are simply finding ways to relieve passenger stress. They're bringing in musical performances, miniature therapy horses, and even bringing in some clowns to keep passengers entertained during the long, long waits. Heather Sells, CBN News. It's a disgrace, but that's the government, ladies and gentlemen. And if you want more government, just keep an eye on these elections coming up and see which candidates want more government. More government. And I look at what's happened to that banking system. I look at what happened to Sarbanes-Oxley. I look at other laws that have been passed by those who claim to be, quote, progressive. Progressive means we're going to foul up everything you're doing. We need freedom in this country. Like Gulliver and the Lilliputians, Gulliver's the giant, and the Lilliputians got all these um, lines around him. Yes. I found, <clears throat> sorry about my voice, That's but I right. found a way around these long lines in the Atlanta airport. What'd you do? I went over and I got a tip from a guy at the airport. He said, go to the international terminal. There won't be any wait. I had my, even though I had a domestic ticket, sailed right through. Well, it was amazing. The international that, that sends you out of the country, doesn't it? Well, no, I still had to take the train back to the domestic terminal, oh. but I <laughs> saved two hours. Dear Lord. Two hours of wait time. Well, Wendy, it's, it, it, to me, it's just appalling they let this happen. And what's happening in, in the Veterans Administration is even worse because people are dying because of this in a bureaucratic inefficiency, and they don't fire people. You know, in the private sector, people either perform their tasks or they don't get a job, and uh, they're able to move faster. What's got to be done quickly is privatize these airports if, if screening is important. But look at what the, the Israelis do. They have people pre-screen the important ones, the ones who really... Get, make trouble. 
but some little 75-year-old grandmother is not going to blow up an airplane. Yet she's got to stand there, take her shoes off, and go through all this ritual. It is absolutely insanity. And all it was was a work make a make work project for the supporters of the Obama administration. Well, in other news, Hillary Clinton is a little closer to winning the Democratic nomination, but Bernie Sanders is doing his best to stop her. John Jessup has that story from our CBN News Bureau. That's right, Pat. Clinton and Sanders split the primary votes on Tuesday, with Clinton barely pulling out a victory in Kentucky, while Sanders got the win in Oregon. And the socialist senator from Vermont again claimed he can beat Donald Trump in November's general election. If the Democratic Party wants to be certain that Donald Trump is defeated, and that we must do, we together are the campaign to do that. Despite the split, Clinton is virtually certain to be the Democratic nominee, and polls are showing a very tight race between her and Donald Trump. The people of Venezuela are suffering right now in a country rocked not only with political unrest under a socialist government, but now that unrest has led to permanent shortages of food, basic goods, and medicine. Many Venezuelans are fleeing to the United States and specifically to Orlando, Florida. Churches there are welcoming close to 400 families a month. Pastor Gabriel Salguero is the president of the National Latino Evangelical Coalition. His Orlando church is welcoming several new families every week. And he told CBN News the work is nowhere near being done. I myself went to Maracaibo, Venezuela years ago to meet with the pastors there and to build bridges of relationships. But at the same time, there's a real opportunity to be a gospel presence and to be Jesus to these people. You can hear more Pastor Salguero's interview, including how his church is sponsoring job fairs and providing other resources for immigrants, along with working with churches in Venezuela by going to CBNNews.com. Well, the issue of child sex trafficking is being featured on the big screen in a recently released movie called The Abolitionists. The film follows special ops teams as they go undercover freeing child sex slaves and arresting their traffickers. Abigail Robertson brings us that story. Sex trafficking has become one of the world's largest and fastest growing criminal enterprises with more than two million young victims. It may seem like a hopeless problem to many, but not to Tim Ballard, a man with one mission, end child sex trafficking. This problem is not going away in, with, with the status quo solution. There's just, there's too many victims. There's too much of this evil out there. Ballard began his fight while working for Homeland Security, handling trafficking cases with American victims. Then, after seeing the international scope of this problem, he realized as a private citizen, he could save even more children. In a leap of faith, Ballard started Operation Underground Railroad, a nonprofit comprised of former CIA, Special Ops, and Navy SEALs who are experts in extraction missions. Since they began two years ago, they have rescued 521 victims and arrested 161 human traffickers. When Oscar-winning producer Gerald Mullen heard about what Ballard was doing, he saw a unique opportunity to expose this horrific crime to the world. Jerry Mullen, the, the Oscar winner of Schindler's List, comes to me and he says, he says, Tim, I want to follow you guys around and I want to, I want to make the Schindler's List of our day. But this time, you know, he talked about how this time, he's going to make the movie while we still have time to rescue kids, while we can use the movie to actually rescue kids. That idea came to life as The Abolitionist, a documentary showing three undercover roundups. During the missions, Ballard and his underground jump teams put on hidden cameras and pose as sex tourists. After they have an exchange of money, authorities come in and make the arrests. The beautiful part about that is it allows the governments or the police uh, around the world to utilize the film so these kids never have to go testify. And yet the bad guys can be put away. So, she, so she's 14? Yes. Here's the thing, does she do everything? If she wants more money, she better ask. There's not going to be any problems. Exactly. And she's 14 for sure. Yes. Laura. Yes. You're the man. Ballard says the hardest part about being undercover is looking in the kids' eyes and not breaking character. The minute he says, oh, she's 12, I see my daughter who's 12. And 
it was so hard because I just want to reach out and just strangle these guys or cry or fall. And instead, I've got to just smile and hug these guys and say, this is what I want, buddy. Good job. Aftercare facilities come in immediately to comfort and support the children after the rescue. The children see their undercover rescuers arrested with their captors and in most cases, never learned they actually saved their lives. There's light at the end of this dark, dark tunnel. And with more support and with more people getting involved, that light becomes bigger and bigger and bigger until we snuff this out and get these poor children out of hell. The creators of The Abolitionists hope the movie brings greater awareness to this issue and shows people that there are ways everyone can help fight for this cause. Reporting from Washington, Abigail Robertson, CBN News. Thanks, Abby. No women in a military draft for now, at least. House Republicans have blocked a provision from the annual defense policy bill that would have required women to register for a draft. Democrats call the move an attempt to avoid a contentious vote on equality for women. But Republicans say much more study is required before changing the longstanding prohibition on women in the selective service. Republicans also questioned if the compulsory draft should be replaced with an all-volunteer force. House Rules Committee Chairman Congressman Pete Sessions said he adamantly opposed coercing women to register for a draft. Well, staying active and keeping your schedule full could help keep your mind sharp as you get older. Health Day News reports a study of older adults found that those with heavy schedules tended to do better on tests of memory information, information processing rather, and reasoning. The study doesn't prove being busy makes people smarter, but the leader of the study says it's likely that being busy benefits your thinking abilities. Other studies have found that learning new skills also can help older adults improve their mental abilities. Pat, I'm sure you agree with that study. Well, there's somebody around here that agrees with it because they're working me hard all the time. <laughs> so can... Yes, they are. You're busier than all of us. <laughs> well, I've got. A... I like to be busy. I've got several jobs, not just one. I've got several of them. It, it does keep me busy. My, my producer was telling me this. You know, these things keep your brain going. I said, yeah, that's why I'm on the phone with you at 730 in the morning talking about issues facing the world. Oh, brother. It, it, okay. really, it really does make a difference when you're yeah, active and well, you're interested in I'm, I'm things. going all the time.